Hello, this is Pastoral Care Week, and during this week, I would like to provide you with a moment to be present, a moment to celebrate the moment, celebrate where you are today. For this time, I would like to share with you some stories from Dr. Rachel Riemann's book, Kitchen Table Wisdom. And the story I'd like to share with you today is called Sanctuary. Before I begin the story, let's just take a moment. If you'd like, close your eyes. Breathe in and breathe out. And center yourself for this moment. She writes this. My cat, Charles, who is 18 years old, has many hiding places. When he is in one of these subtle change, when he is in one of these, a subtle change comes over him. No longer is he diligent and wary, assessing the environment for its potential threat. In his hiding places, he seems at peace and unafraid. These places are many and varied. Some are classic feline sanctuaries, under the bed, behind the drapes, or in the closet. Others are unique to the house we share, the nook under the stairs, or the place behind the television. But one of them is in plain sight, a spot on the living room rug. When Charles is in this spot, he draws about himself the usual inviolateness of all his other hiding spaces. No matter if the delivery man, the neighbor kids, or even the vet comes, in full view he is calm and relaxed. He is himself. He seems so safe there that watching him, you would think that he is alone. In a book about Spain, I remember reading an interesting thing about bullfighting. There is a place in the bull ring where the bull feels safe. If he can reach this place, he stops running and can gather his full strength. He is no longer afraid. From the point of view of his op opponent, he becomes dangerous. This place in the ring is different for every bull. It is the job of the matador to be aware of this, to know where sanctuary lies for each and every bull to be sure that the bull does not occupy his place of wholeness. In bull fighting, the safe place is called querencia. For humans, the querencia is a place in our inner world. Often it is a familiar place that has not been noticed until a time of crisis. Sometimes it is a viewpoint, a position from which to conduct a life different for each person. Often it is simply a place of deep inner silence. One of the meditations I have done with people with cancer begins with the suggestion, find a safe place. A man newly diagnosed with colon cancer once told me the following. I never got into the exercise because I could not find a safe place to begin. I looked everywhere. I imagine myself in my home. I imagine myself trout fishing. I imagine myself behind my desk at my business or at the head of the table in the boardroom. Nothing helped. In the midst of this, I realized this sort of searching was familiar. I've been doing it all of my life. I began to feel desperate. In the end, I imagined myself a little boy in my mother's arms. This last helped. Slowly, I began to feel calmer, to get quieter inside. And when at last I felt safe, I suddenly knew that the arms around me were not my mother's, but my own. The place of safety inside me, not outside where I have been looking all my life, all those hiding places, all those achievements. It's inside me. That's why I never found it before. 
In working with people with cancer, I have seen the change which happens when a person finds their clearancia. In full view of the matador, they are calm and peaceful, wise. They have gathered their strength around them. The inner silence is more secure than any hiding place. Perhaps this is why the silence in the giant redwood forest near my home draws me. Many mornings I get up early and dress hurriedly to get to the woods before the tour buses and the cars arriving with people from all over the world come to marvel at the majesty of nature. At eight in the morning, the great trees stand rooted in silence, so absolute that one's inmost self comes to rest, an aged silence, the grandmother of all silences. I find the silence even more remarkable than the trees. Some mornings, I sleep through two alarms and awaken only after the first buses have arrived. I go anyway. There are hundreds of people in the woods before me, people speaking French, German, Spanish, people marveling to each other and calling to their children in Japanese, Swedish, Russian, and some languages I do not know, and children shrieking in the universal language of childhood. But the silence is always there, unchanged. It is as impervious to these passing sounds as the trees themselves. As I age, I am grateful to find a silence has begun to gather in me, coexisting with my tempers and my fears, unchanged by my joys or my pain. Sanctuary, connected to the silence everywhere. So let us reflect on those words. Let us reflect on what is sanctuary to us at this moment. Where do we find calm? Where do we find wisdom? In the face of all adversities we are going through. So let us take a moment to sit comfortably, lay comfortably, Connect with our breath, close our eyes, and imagine our sanctuary. Now take that place of sanctuary with you, wherever you go, whatever you face. Thank you for joining with me today, and I will be providing this time throughout the week. We can imagine and dream together. Thank you for joining me.